We're reviewing Alcor Life Extension Foundation located in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's one of the two big players in cryonics, the other being Cryonics Institute up by Detroit, Michigan. Alcor owns their own building and can house approximately a thousand patients and is located right across the street from the Scottsdale Airport. There is also a hospice hospital that is close by that's cryonics friendly. Once death is pronounced, the Alcor team can get started with the infusion and preservation process. If you're not familiar with the cryonics, it's the practice or the technique of deep freezing bodies of people who have just died in the hope that scientific advances may allow them to be revived in the future. Most people would be more familiar with cryostasis, which is used in the movies in deep space travel. People are put into sub-zero temperatures to slow their aging process during long space travel. If you'd like to see if cryonics is possible, take a look at the wood frog. During the winter, he freezes totally. His heart stops, no brain activity. But when spring comes around, he thaws out and becomes alive again. The wood frog is an amazing creature. It's able to create its own antifreeze that it pumps through its body before it freezes. Now, if it couldn't create that antifreeze, when it froze, the cells in his body would rupture, destroying them. Alcor has created their own antifreeze. They call it Profusion, and it's M22 is the name of it, and it's patented. Not only the wood frog can come back from the dead, but so can people. There's thousands of cases of people dying and coming back to life. Now, here's one such person. Uh, the police found him in the snow. He's, he was there all night. He had uh, no heartbeat, no brain activity. And so um, their police scanner, they said all signs lead, uh, lead us to believe that he has been dead for a considerable amount of time. Um, so they brought him in, started pumping blood through him, uh, finally got his heart started. And then later on, his brain activity picked up. So he, he actually was clinically dead and came back to life. Um, so there's thousands of these cases. So let's take a scenario. You agree with the cryonics, you sign up, you pass away at the hospital that's closest to Alcor. Um, they start the procedures immediately. They get you into uh, suspended animation. And here you are tucked away in your in your chronics tube. Now what? Well, a few things could happen. One of the things that could happen, which is more of a negative side, is it could be like Mad Max. You know, the future could uh, be bleak. Um, bad things could happen. You know, we've seen um, Aztec, the uh, Macedonia, Rome, you know, all great empires and they fell. So the same thing could happen with the United States. Um, look at Sears Roebuck and Company. They've been around for over 100 years, and they're going out of business. So there's no guarantees. And even if they try to bring you back, they may not be able to bring you back. So there's really no guarantees whatsoever this could work. Okay, so that's the bad scenario. Well, the good scenario would be um, technology just keeps improving. Um, think of it like you know the car the model t and it just keeps improving the cars get better and better every year so maybe technology will be like that um, one day it'll be like star wars you know the host the whole planet is one big city and technology is just incredible so in that case um, bringing somebody back to life that has is in suspended animation may be easy it may be something that you know people want to do that would be the best case scenario. And then at that point, when they brought you back to life, hopefully they'll have uh, new technology, like even nanotechnology that they could put into your, once they bring you back to life, they could put into your system and it would repair your DNA and actually could reverse aging. So you could be, you know, 20 years old in the future and it would be absolutely amazing. And could you imagine the video games? It'd be like PlayStation 20. Um, so, there could be an upside and there could be a downside. It's almost like a, a coin toss. I mean, I'm, I'm all in 100%. What other options do you have? This is the first time in history that you might have a chance to cheat, cheat the Grim Reaper. Um, so I think it would just be totally amazing. I mean, odds are pretty much stacked against you, but hey, what other option do you have? I mean, at least you have a fighting chance. I mean, just like if you were to have a heart attack. Uh, back in the old days, uh, for someone to open up your chest and have some kind of surgery on you, they would burn you at the stake. Um, that would be considered witchcraft a few hundred years ago. Uh, but nowadays, doctors are get are 
considered heroes or saints uh, for saving your life or saving the life of your child. Just like the scenario with the doctor, I mean, if you're having a heart attack and about to die, I mean, you want to survive. You want to be able to um, have that technology to fix you. This is, to me, is the same thing. It's, it's another chance to survive and, you know, to be able to survive and then um, possibly wake up in the future and see what all has changed would be amazing. Think about the technology that they would have and, and the things you could see and do. It would just be incredible. All right, sit back and enjoy. We're going to have Diane with Alcor Membership Department give you a tour of Alcor. Uh, right here is our ice bath. Okay. When we get a call that one of our page, our members uh, basically are in almost time to need our services, uh, we go to their location. We call it standby. Ideally, we want you in Arizona when you die, but if you can't, our team goes to your location as part of the service that we uh, we can, you know, if you, you can't be here at the facility when you expire, but we work with a local hospice facility. Um, and usually when people are there, when they expire, we can get them here to the lab within 30, 40 minutes from the time. They let us do our, our standby in the um, park, you know, we have our transport vehicle there and we literally just stand by there until they're pronounced and then we can begin the procedure. You're, if you're here in Arizona, that's great. If it's not, our standby team does go to your location. And once we're there, we start the cool down process. Uh, this is for educational purposes only. Uh, I know the stand, this cool down unit looks really, it's a prototype, so the, the ones we use are much nicer. We start cooling you down. This is a cooling mask. You want to cool your head right away. Uh, we intubate the member, we cover them with water, ice. This is called, uh, this Lucas machine, we call it a thumper. It's a portable CPR unit. It's, we want to keep the oxygen in your blood as long as possible while we're transporting you to the lab. Uh, so we have you set up like this while we're transporting you. We do be very obviously if you're outside the state then we change the way. Then we get covered in wa water ice or dry ice depending on what we have. We work with local funeral homes and then we have a contract with a funeral home here because they all talk to each other transporting people around mm -hmm. um, so that they can, they're the ones that will to pick the people up on the, from the airport for us. So we're not allowed down there just as the funeral homes are. Um, Alcor, this, our freezers, we keep at least three whole bodies worth of uh, perfusion, the M22 solution, and we always keep it cold. Uh, one whole body, you see there, one whole body is on about 120 liters. It's, very, it's a, basically a high grade medical antifreeze. It's very good, only Alcor gets to use it, it's patented, um, so we're the only crowd that, crowd protected, uh, we're the only ones that use that crowd protected. Okay. That's the, this is the operating room. Okay, this is the... Um, this is the whole body unit. That's the neuro unit that you see over there. And then what you see up there is the, uh, one of our patients. Um, we do a CT scans of our neuro patients. We can't do the whole bodies yet. So that tells us how well the brain was perfused, what part is ice, what part is crowd protected tissues. And what's really interesting is if the person had brain cancer, you can actually see the outline of the cancer because it doesn't perfuse. It comes back as a solid mass. This is the operating room. We've actually, the procedure itself is once the patient comes in, that's the, whole body table. Um, it's actually is at a slant because we want to um, collect any blood, body fluids, or melting ice into a container on the body there and then we discard it. And at the same time, think of it like a dialysis machine. We go through the carotid arteries. We take the blood and body fluids out while we're putting in our cryoprotective solution. At the same time, we're lowering your body temperature down with the liquid nitrogen. So there's several things happening at once. So basically, we're slowly um, it's called perfusion, where we just based like a sponge, soaks up all the cryoprotective solution. It protects the cells during the freezing process so they don't crack. So that's, but it takes, it's a really long time. A whole body takes about 10 to 14 days to get down the liquid nitrogen temperature, depending on how big the person is. Um, that's one minus 196 degrees Celsius. And for a neuro, it's about four days, most essential. Interesting. Uh, as you see, these are pictures of our patients. We'd like everybody to see that the we have real people back there and we want more more life. We just did our 60th pet, a little dog named Eddie. Uh, I know here, he was the office kitty for many years. We gotta give him like a new kitty. And then that's uh, Caesar, and then Jerry Leaf is the gentleman behind him, that's his human. He was already crop preserved, but that was when he was taking care of his puppy. Mm -hmm. All right, these are the doers. Each doer holds four people, or 10 uh, each, well, we're expanding the patient care bay. If you come in two months, this whole room's gonna be different because they're just, they're almost done with the, the other side of the wall there. We own the whole building and they're gonna break through probably in the next two weeks. 
So this is going to be really cool. Looking. That's going to be. All right. So this is right now we have 150 patients. Okay. And we just cryo preserved our 60th pet, and we only do pets for members only because it makes no sense to freeze your pet if you're not going to be there in the future. Stop. This is what the patient care bay is. I'll, I'll when they're done, I'll show you. The big white tank you see in the back holds extra liquid nitrogen. Alcor has approximately nine ten months worth of liquid nitrogen on the premises at a time. One of the reasons they chose the Phoenix area to move to when they came out of Riverside was that there's seven liquid nitrogen manufacturers in the valley. It's actually very cheap. It's only like 19 cents a, a liter for it. Yeah, that center fun. you see there, that's our center column of the door. That's Dr. Perry, a 3D printed version of them anyways. And then that right below them is a neuro can, the head scoop in the... This goes in the center. Let me show you the doors. Here, okay. we have a, a printed version so that you can see how they look. All right, now the doors are divided into quadrants, all right? Each quadrant can hold one whole body or 10 neurals. They're stacked in there, two per shelf. See, after you get down to liquid nitrogen temperature, <coughs> they put a very nice sleeping bag around your body. They put a neural can on your head. They strip you super tight in there and all the neural, all the whole bodies are in their head first. Currently, we have 94 neural cryopreservations and the rest are whole body. So it's, you know, it's, two to one for neural versus whole body, but currently um, the membership themselves, half are signed up for whole body, half are signed up for neural. Now, after all these doors, the ones that we currently have made are filled, the guys had redesigned the doer. This is the super doer. So instead of four, uh, four whole bodies, we can fit nine in one of them. And it takes up the exact same space on the floor. So we haven't changed the space, we just changed the design of it to include more space in there. Yeah, they Is have little knobs, uh, little uh, forms at the bottom, so that each one kind of clicks into place okay. into the pods. Wow. We call the whole body pods or neural pods, depending on what we put inside of it. It'll last um, about a year to keep it at the super type type uh, to keep it at liquid nitrogen. Okay. Well, let me just show you the evolution of the doers. Okay. All right. Oh, on my makes sense. This is the original doer that a first, the very first person to be cryopreserved in, Dr. James Bedford. He had it made for himself. Um, it's obviously it's vertical as opposed to perpendicular. Uh, this is more efficient than that. Uh, the family members took care of him for a while before a company called CryoCare took care of him. And then when Alcor got all of CryoCare's patients, Dr. Bedford is with us safely. He has been in cryopreservation the longest since 1967. Please. So all right, these two doers here, those are the first ones. They've been in use since 1972. They have some of our first patients in them. And as you see, the, the style of them vary over time. And that's just the evolution. We're making them more efficient each time to the point we got to the big doer. That's the big one there, the super doer. Um, we haven't started using yet because these are still empty. So, but Is that stainless steel? Yes. Nice. It takes about six months to manufacture one of those from start to finish. It does, because we have to test it. it. Actually, most of that's testing phase. Do y'all do it in-house, or is that? Yes, they just finished testing this one. It's up to grade. Although the company that we manufacture, they test it too. And each doer cost about 30 grand. Okay, yeah, if you, if you need to, but Alcor tops it off every two weeks. Okay. All right. They, they were doing it this morning. If you were here like an hour ago, you would have seen them doing it. It's really cool to think. Uh, yeah, it's got that. That's why they all look kind of, uh, you know, got the condensation there. We can work out the equipment. We can work to finish talking. We got some nice equipment. Oh, yeah. That's not unusual. We get medium here at least once a week. All right. These are more of our patients. Now, Yumi here, she was awesome. She's a really cool lady. They gave her a month. She held on for about 14 before we had to cryo preserve her. And Orville here, he was really sweet. I really liked talking to him. He was a nice guy. Um, Paul Richards, Paul Garfield, he used to come in and do uh, filing for me and the accountant, uh, the financial director, once a week. And then uh, when he got cryo preserved, now he's with us here. This gentleman, Richard Jones, we have his Emmy that he won for a skit he did for Carol Burnett. It's really funny. It's black and white even. 1931, or yeah, 1931 he was born. Yeah, he was cryo preserved in 88. But, um, you know, those things are really heavy. I, I was amazed at how much weight they had to them. <laughs> and then this gentleman, he's been in preser preservation since 1990 and his mom sends him a birthday card and a Christmas card every year. Part of your membership, you get a, um, 
memory box. We put into an underground storage facility in Kansas. It's an old salt mine. They converted it into a storage facility. So uh, he is, when he wakes up, he's going to get probably, you know, depending on how long, much longer his mother lasts, 35 years of business, of birthday cards and stuff that she's sent to him that we've kept for. Very and that can go in there too. People vacuum pack them. Uh, into little plastic things for us, either hard drives, CDs, uh, flash drives, you know, any variations. We're not sure how the media in the future can be, but we figured they could still, act, you know, take it off, the data off of there for them. Right. I have people put in uh, photos, diaries, journals, little mementos. It's, we don't give them a big box, but enough to where we figured with a revival process can help you figure out who you are, you know, look at family members and things like that as well. Here's some, here's our doers pictures we did. This is how, what it looks like when they're filling up the doers. So that's what they were doing. Okay, that's morning. what you're telling me about. Yeah, see, that's what it looks like. And that's like every two weeks they open They're delivering one of our doers there. There's a company, I think, in New Mexico that manufactures them. Okay, from here. That only goes to 2011 because that's when we did this. Did you know Benjamin Franklin wanted to be crime crime preserved? He thought that. you'd have to almost like pickle somebody, not realizing you okay. to do low, but that's still pretty cool. Benjamin Franklin is one of my favorite founding fathers. Our medicine cannot take care of whatever your ills you, uh, you know, takes care of you. So this is what you use to keep you in stasis till that's available. Alcor has, uh, we have the Asset Protection Trust. Uh, people put funds in there for the future so that when they wake up, you're right, they don't want to be a pauper. They will have uh, funds with them. Um, in fact, we have an attorney coming in on Thursday because we have a lot of people that want to do this, but you know, it takes a lot of money. So we have like a group of five or six chronicists who aren't really rich, but they're not really poor. They're going to pool it together to do like almost a, a partnership of their crowd preservation trust. Interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of, of what they call known unknowns. Oh, you don't know, but you know there's things that you don't count for us for future. Um, think about it. Alcor, you're paying not only for your cryopreservation, preservation, you're paying for your revival as well. We put funds with each cryopreservation preservation into our patient care trust. Okay. Uh, the patient care trust was set aside specifically to keep you in stasis, cover the cost of repair, revival, and rehabilitation into the new era. We're not going to just kick you out and kick you out, you know, set you out the door, set you up with a delivery service like Fry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's your Uber. <laughs> So, Good luck. Uh, so, I mean, so the Alcor has put together a lot of that as well. Here, this is the article I want you to read. Okay. Read through that first before you finish your blog, okay? This uh, gentleman, Tim Urban, did an awesome job. I have gotten so far 12 full members, and I got another 12 in the applicant queue to finish from this story alone. I've been here 13 years. Nothing has ever com compared to this. I've never gotten any kind of. Well, there you have it. There's the walkthrough, everything you wanted to know about Alcor. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I would also would like to hear your thoughts if you're signing up for Alcor or if you're going to sign up for the Chronix Institute and which one you like and the reasons why. Thank you for watching.